Hello and welcome back to Tips from the Top Floor. I'm Chris and you're, watch, you're watching, you're listening to a podcast that has not released an episode in weeks. And uh, reasons, okay? So <laughs> one reason is that, um, well, okay, let me introduce the guest first because I'm not doing this on my own today. I'm doing this with my friend John Miller. John, how are you? I'm doing great. Thanks for having me on, Chris. Uh, thanks for being here. I'm uh, I'm very happy that you found the time to do this and that you found the time to bring us um, something very different from the usual because what we want to talk about today is um, 360 degree stuff. And I'm talking photography. We're talking, of course, videography. You're a videographer. Um, I guess listeners who've been around for a while will know you. Uh, for those who don't, can you just uh, say a few words about yourself? Yeah, I think I was first on your show in 2007. <laughs> so <laughs> we go back quite a ways. <laughs> um, Very true. Well, no, I just, I have the, uh, well, it was a podcast back when video was a podcasting thing as well before YouTube. We but, called it video um, podcasts. Yeah, video podcasting. But um, I was one of the first uh, kind of recognized uh, travel video series uh, about climbing Everest, visiting Everest um, in Nepal or in Tibet back then, and then added Nepal and and the third side, which is in Tibet as well, and and uh, became the rest of Everest. I had. I know that many of your audience probably already know this information, but I was hired to document a climb of Everest, or at least the expedition, not necessarily the climb itself. You, you didn't Back climb Everest, you, you almost, you almost only halfway climbed it. I only climbed <laughs> up up to uh, the advanced base camp, which is I still just, pretty high up there, but yeah. has, you know, thousands of meters to go. Yeah. Um, but but uh, I... I created a film out of that it was called the rest of ever or excuse me it was called Everest the other side and when video podcasting became a thing again this is pretty much pre pre mainstream YouTube um, I recognized that I could uh, release the rest of the story from that climb because only one minute of every hour that I filmed on average made it into the finished cut that's kind of normal for so documentaries right you film you overshoot quite a bit you overshoot quite a bit and you try to see what story emerges but there's so many stories that emerge but you have to focus on you know a certain one or or, or three storylines in the film so you're and you're so throwing away a whole bunch of stuff you're throwing away a lot of amazing <laughs> content and you just can't i mean it, it was on the, the film was on pay-per-view and uh you know it did okay and everything but there was so much more to be told and so when self-publishing through podcasting became a thing I, I recognized that there was a real opportunity to tell the rest of those stories. And I was an Everest nut since I was a child and being able to visit Everest and see it with my own eyes and, and not just stand at the mountain and look at the mountain, but know what it looks like behind the camera. Yeah. Uh, if, I, if I turned around and looked the other way, that was really exciting to me. And so I tried to document all of that just for myself. And that became the show the rest of Everest because I want to show the rest of the experience now that was all filmed in 2003 not knowing about podcasting once the podcast took off Apple gave me quite a bit of promotion they uh, the the gentleman in charge of the podcast directory was a fan and so he gave me a lot of marquee placement on the podcast uh, directory it, it grew an audience very quickly, and I was able to take donations and fund a trip to go back out there in 2007 and film content specifically for the podcast. And what I did was I filmed everything specifically to answer questions people had asked me about this and that. And so it became interactive. And that trip, 2007 trip, did very well. And, and then, uh, that's about the time when you and I met or when I found you and sent you that legendary now legendary email uh about continue doing this because i had found it and i <laughs> binge watched before that term was there before people knew what binge watching is i binge watched 20 
something episodes and and uh, I got I, that's not cold turkey you know very tough situation for me to not have my 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 fix of the rest of Everest so I sent you an email saying you keep, you gotta keep it coming I'm a fan I I, I I do believe you said you don't probably know me but um. <laughs> <laughs> but then it turned out you did. <laughs> But it turns out I have been following your show for a while. I think because of Franklin McMahon. Yeah. Um, uh, back, back. Uh, he 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 had some creative podcast, and you were regularly uh, snippets on his sh on his show. And uh, I remember having to rip them to CD or uh, <laughs> not rip them to CD, record them to CD to play them in my car. Now, now you're That's showing your, yeah, now you're showing was. your age. <laughs> yeah. So I actually did know who you were, and um, anyway, you and I, you you had some photo workshop you were going to do in Fort Collins, Colorado, of all places, mm -hmm. where I happen to live, and so we were able to meet, and then we got along famously and started coming up with plans to actually hold photo workshops. Yeah in tibet no you sent you sent me an email you sent me an email shortly after asking me if i no i visited you and then after that when you had figured out that i was okay oh. with uh, sleeping in a tent i uh, got that email from you late at late one night asking me if i was um if i could imagine doing a photo workshop at mount everest base camp i think i tried to time that right before you fell asleep yeah and i that, was that I, I had all my defenses down at that time and then <laughs> I was like, the answer was something along the lines of, hell yeah, uh, 15 minutes later. So we, we made it work. We made it work. We, we brought people out there, and we were able to record material that, again, was brand new and showed Ever Everest in, in, a, in a way you'd <clears> never <throat> see because everything is always focused on the climb. But just a trek to the mountain is an amazing, life-changing experience that is full of incredible stories and incredible um, just feelings and... And events yeah and so my goal every time I've gone out there is to film it in a slightly different way and to document more of the the feeling of being there I mean you, you you're almost like um, almost like the, like the mad scientist of uh, bringing a new kind of rig there and we've we've been together we've been there together so many times and and that and one time you bring this weird self home built stereo rig and look into stereo photography videography even though that's not a thing at that point and um th um the reason i have you here now is that uh you have just you're just in the process of releasing new episodes of the rest of everest uh and they yeah. are in 360 so um yeah. what does that even let me give mean? you my let me give you let me give you my 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 little pitch here what i've done is uh, in 2003, we were filming an SD. That was right before the HDV cameras started coming out that gave you kind of onto entry tapes. level HD <laughs> onto, onto, onto mini DV tape. Um, and then so started in SD, 2007 was HD, 2010 was 3D, 2000, there were some other trips in there um, where I filmed in HD and 3D, and then 2000. 14 was UAV, which was drone. I was one of the first people to film the, those regions with a drone. And then in 2019, November, I went out again uh, to do some scouting work for another big trip that we had planned for 2020. <laughs> That's unfortunately not happening. Yeah. Uh, this little pandemic thing going on. But um, that was going to be... Um, that 2019 trip was UHD, which was 4K, and 360. So SD, HD, 3D, UAV, UHD, 360. That's my little marketing pitch. That's how I filmed Everest. Okay, so the, the route to Everest. And and by the way, just just to go just briefly go back to the history angle of this, um, the rest of Everest and uh, the subsequent first tour that we did together in 2009 and the other ones um, that is pretty much how my my whole travel photography business workshop thing got kicked off because that put me on the map as a as a, a bit of a travel photographer so um you i never owe, know the routes I, that I these things you. take <laughs> <laughs> so so this this was uh, this this first thing in 2009 was a bit of a 
a pivotal moment for my life. There's a lot of things turned around and changed, or I changed a lot of things, including stopping smoking and uh, and other things. Um, and uh, th you have just been back to some of these places, or just how long is that ago now? Last year? Yeah, so just less than a year ago. Yeah. It was uh, the first first three weeks of November. Yeah. And um, so that that was uh, that was a trip. That was a it was it was a, it was a treat in a way because there were I, I didn't have any of my own clients. Um, the the guide that I use now is my dear friend Dawa, who happens to live here in Fort Collins, which is very convenient. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, he lives kind of just down the road, and so. He and I have known each other since 2004 or so. Uh, he has a restaurant in Fort Collins, and I actually wrote a good deal of the film, Everest the Other Side, in his restaurant. Oh, uh, that's Just convenient. trying to soak up the atmosphere and the chai and the uh, 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 the samosas and everything. And <laughs> and uh, so he and I he and I became friends, and uh, actually many of the people in the film, you know, are close family friends or, or family uh, as the Sherpa community is very tight knit so um, but yeah he has a, a guiding company and so you and I uh, you know you, you knew Dawa as well before we ever went on a trip with him uh -huh. and and uh, we asked him if he'd be interested in guiding this next one in 2014 and he said let's do it and so we had a wonderful trip then and so that was um, I have no complaints about any of the other people that I've worked with out there. It's just that Dawa lives right down the road, and if I ever have a question, I can go right down and, and ask him face-to-face, -face, not have to worry about time differences. So, so you and Dawa and a couple of friends <clears throat> went back to the Himalayas last year? We went last year because we were looking at doing a special trip. Um, we've had a lot of requests f from people to go back, or to go for the first time. And so we wanted, every time I go out there, I film it a little differently, but I also try to provide a little bit different experience for, we have some, Chris, you and I have some clients who, who've done every trip. And um, anytime we go out there, they want to go. And so I, I, I try to come up with new experiences and this one was going to be special because we were going to be doing a, um, a, a medical trip where we were going to provide some medical care to a remote awesome. village. And <clears throat> so there's a lot of logistics to do with that. And so we went out, and uh, Dawa had some other uh, clients who live here in Fort Collins. One of the it was two, two women, one of them lives actually in view of my house, uh, about a mile away down my valley here. And um, she, she does treks as well. Uh, she, she does travel, uh, or, or she organizes travel tours. So it was like, these like professional people who weren't just your regular tourists. And so Dao and I got to go back, do all the logistic uh, exploration and try out all these different helicopter services that are there now. And air taxis are a thing. They're not really happening in metropolitan areas. They're happening in the, Kum <laughs> the Solo Kumbu Valley in Nepal. Things have changed a lot since 10, 11 years ago. I mean, uh, the, hell, the 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 taxis. I've I've watched the videos meticulously. Watched all your new episodes, and um, the, I've I've seen like new stairs have been built where it was just a dirt path before, and uh, new buildings there. I, I mean, th this is dr a dramatic change in ten years. I would I would think, and still has still kept a lot of its original feeling. I would say. Yeah, it's it's. There's been a lot of amazing things, and actually. One of the reasons I filmed all of this was for friends such as you and Monica and we and do appreciate other, uh, this. Par participants and everything who who just they love 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 this this region and it. I've been all over the world. I've been very fortunate, and I've been to six of the seven continents. And there is no place on earth that I love as much as this area around Everest. Um, very true. Not just the landscape, but the people. But seeing how the people's lives are being impacted that's something that i've been able to document for you know nearly 20 years now and um i <laughs> i'm probably one of the only guests uh that you have on the show that has uh 
you know, a, a picture of... <laughs> <laughs> of, of, of you, <laughs> Monica, and myself in the background, yes. <laughs> Framed on my wall at all times. Um, is that, shot um, by Tilo, by the means, way. I think Tilo shot, shot that. <laughs> yeah, I, think, I think he did, yeah. But, um, yeah, that, uh, this is, it's, it's really important, so I was able to document that. Not really thinking that I'd release new videos of the rest of Everest. The show's been on hiatus uh -huh. for a while as, as I have grown kids now and, and uh, school and and uh, a, a, a different career than I had when we first met. But but uh, I knew that I had to get this material out. So that's where we start talking about uh, so how I filmed let's, it. Let's, let's, let's get into this the... Was, this was new. Yeah, let's, let's get into a bit, to bit of a, the tech aspect of this whole thing uh, because that's what fascinates me and a lot of the listeners, I'm sure. Uh, so shooting 360 means and let's let's just disambiguate the the 360 versus the stereoscopic because that's two different things right um they're very different 360 yeah. is just a sphere but you don't have separate pictures for both eyes yes and 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 uh, stereoscopic is shot with two cameras and then you typically have like 180 degrees stereoscopic so um 360 is an all-around view and if you have a device could be a uh, an Oculus Quest or some VR uh, goggles or a cardboard thing. Yep, there is a Quest. Um, then you can go, <laughs> you have all of it. Then you can dive into that aspect of it. You can you can watch those as if you were there. You can look around. Um, and I've done some 360 photography with a Ricoh Theta, the first one, which is so low in resolution compared to what's available now um so it's a different beast because you don't have to frame you just have to be there pretty much so uh let me ask you what did you shoot with and by the way we'll we'll see a lot of this and your process that's one of the thing you want to share with us like the editing process how does that look like um so if you're listening to this, this one might be a good point to go into the show notes and tap that link that says watch this as a video because this is going to be very visual. Let me put it this way and I can't explain it all or we can't really narrate everything. So this is a, a very visual episode today. So what did you yeah, shoot so, the 360 with? Yeah, sorry everyone for all this this uh, background. <laughs> it's hopefully not boring <laughs> background information. But yeah, so... Um, let, let me just say that I, I've been trying to give more of an idea of what it feels like to be there. And 360 is one of those things that I, I saw it starting to come on the scene a few years ago. I bought my first camera, I want to say in maybe May of 2016, and that was the, the Theta, Theta S. And it was way early <laughs> back then for, for these all-in-one sort of consumer pro products. Everything else had been sort of kludged together like GoPros and everything like that, which um, was just too too experimental uh, for yeah, where we were going. It's got to start somehow, you know. So you got to start. Well, that's how the drone stuff was in 2014. Yeah. It was it was very DIY. But um, so anyway, um, I bought it in 2016 and experimented it. I was able to take it to Greenland with you, mm -hmm. and um, we'll see some of that stuff. I was able to take it to. Uh, um, Petra in Jordan. I was able to take it to um, Jerusalem, uh, Singapore, uh, Hawaii, all kinds of places. But then um, the Insta360 cameras started really getting pretty good. Now I bought a um, an Insta360 One X and really loved it, and that was the one I was going to take with me to Everest because uh, I knew this scouting trip was coming up. Um, however, unfortunately, it got stolen when I was at a conference for my job, Oopsie. and uh, so I, I I replaced it with um, the uh, Insta360 uh, Evo, and I believe, believe it's pronounced Evo. It's capital E, capital V, capital O, mm -hmm. um, and it is a uh, here's here's the camera itself right here. This is um, uh, uh, this is a different form factor than the Theta. The Theta kind of looks like a like a candy, like a candy bar. bar, yeah. Or excuse me, not the Theta, the the one the one X. Yeah, but they look, look very like, similar. I they, mean, they they look almost identical. Same same form factor, yeah. 
And I love that form factor. The reason I went with this Evo is just as an, ex this whole thing was an experiment. And this is a, a convertible camera um, where I can actually open it up here and take and that out. And flip both and lenses it, forward. So now it's a... And then this, now it converts to a stereo 180 camera. So you yeah. get one hemisphere. Uh, but you get one for each eye, and mm -hmm. so it actually gives you depth, and that's pretty cool. And they're they're spaced um, as as eyes would be spaced mostly, yeah. so yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. But uh, you know, as I used it, I realized the much much as yeah. the way most of the 3D has gone in my career, it's it's a gimmick. I, it's just not as important as you think. Um, maybe that will change in the future uh, as headsets and get smaller and and more affordable, but um, right now, just standard uh, monoscopic 360 mm -hmm. is great. It's fine. So any, in any case, as you can see, let me just put this back together here. Okay, so it's got two lenses. It's yep. got one on the front and one on the back. So this gives you, these are uh, complete fisheye lenses. This gives you one hemisphere, Top, down, left, right, yep. and then this one gives you the other. Top, down, left, right. gives you everything. It stitches it together. Um, it, you can either stitch it together in camera or you can stitch it. It actually records two files, one for each lens, each for each uh, sensor, and then you can you can do some stitching. Um, when, and I just literally mean stitching those two images together so that you get one continuous uh, frame. And uh, so anyway, this worked really well. Um, the only thing I didn't like about it is that it's blocky up top here. And um, so I ended up... Uh, oh, the form factor, okay. The form factor, Doesn't yeah. slide into pockets as easily, does it? It doesn't, but you know what? <laughs> what uh, What's happened is when I um, when, when I trek, I, I, I always have a camera in my hand, and I literally mean in my hand at all times. I'm looking for one... No, here's... Uh, Here's the camera that I filmed in 2014 with most of the time. Mm. And I just kept it, uh, this is a little um, Sony Nix something. Yeah, Nix 5 or something. Yeah. I just kept it in my hand at all times. And so I got very comfortable always having it in my hand. And so I just, um, it has this ex extendable selfie stick here. Um, I, I just, I had it in my hand at all times. And so I just walked around with it and uh i just had it at the ready you know 360 cameras really well. are, are i believe the only way where it's acceptable to use a selfie stick <laughs> this is true but the neat thing is that because of the the way that the stitching happens um it uh it actually edits the selfie stick it out disappears, completely. So yeah. we'll, we'll show some footage in this in a couple minutes it here, disappears but and gives it, you a funny looking hand sometimes but that's okay it, it, it looks like uh, a third person is filming it for yeah, you. Yeah. It looks, and it, and it looks, or maybe you have a, people have said, you have a drone or following you around? Which it nope, does I look just... like, especially with with today's ways of editing these things. So, yeah, it's so pretty neat. filming is one thing, and there's lots of different styles. If you've ever, if, uh, if, if you've ever tried that whole VR thing with videography, then uh, you'll know there are different styles of, of filming, setting the camera somewhere so, so it doesn't move or moving the camera and some people are more prone to motion sickness when the camera is moving around um, uh, you did kind of a bit of everything so um, the, the filming is one side and you filmed with the 360 you also filmed with a rectangular camera with the normal in quotes camera um, but then editing is a completely different beast I guess because you have as that I said this was, this was all there. experimental this yeah. was all just a test because I knew that I wasn't really going to focus too much on filming for this trip. Yeah. Then I got really into it. When well, I was wait, out which, there. which I realized during throughout those those different episodes and we are going to link to those in the in the show notes. Um throughout those episodes I can see that you are like ramping it up. So in the beginning um the first one and you and I we went back and forth and shared some feedback about the, the editing style yeah, you were my you were my test audience for that I, I, I was and I, I put this on the on the on the oculus quest headset to watch it to be in there and then I sometimes some of those I also watched in 2d and I think that's one of the big issues that you're facing is the for whom are you editing this 
So um, let's uh, maybe we should start showing what the actual footage looks like. Let me switch and I can the screen some over. Of that. Yeah. So, so so what we're seeing here is your your editor. That's um, Adobe Premiere. Yeah. So I use Premiere for all of this, and um, what I actually do is let me show you what what the actual footage looks like um, because it is. Uh, 360, um, you can't, you know, view the 360 right off the bat. What you actually get is the camera will output an equirectangular projection. Mm -hmm. So much like a map where, um, you know, if, if you see uh, an equirectangular projection of the globe, you'll see Greenland completely, uh, almost the size of North America. Distorted, yeah. Um, distorted, that's what happens here. So... So uh, we are well, seeing the entire 360, but in a square format. So it's flattened out. Yeah. yeah. So you can see, you can see here, um, this image, you can see how I'm cut off on the left side and you can see my uh, shoulder on the right side of the yeah. frame. Now that is actually seamless. And when you view it um, either in a headset or if I go into this, this uh, VR mode, Oh, you so can you can just pan, pan around. around in the editor, okay. Yeah, so you can see I'm not actually cut. I look quite happy there, don't I? <laughs> you, um, do. <laughs> uh, you can see that there's no seam, even though the seam is actually going right through my shoulder here. Um, but uh, the neat thing is it's, it's, it's filming absolutely everything. So I can, we can look down at my feet. <laughs> we can look up. Um, at these trekkers behind us, um, I can look at see what the weather was like that day in the sky. So it's a it, it's it a total sphere everything. in all directions. It's a, it's a total sphere, and that was that was what was really important to me with these 360 cameras. Now that, that's you don't have to focus on just what the photographer wants you to focus. And on. and that's one of my gripes with 360 video um, that it's really difficult because. Uh, sometimes some of it is difficult to watch because you don't really know where you want to look and you always have that feeling of you're missing something that's going on behind you so I find myself going left and right and up and down trying to find things so you as a as a as an editor uh, have to take like special care to guide people's attention and make sure that they that they don't have that feeling so I'm saying this over and over again this was all experimental I did not go out there with <laughs> any idea of how to produce any of this. I figured I'll just shoot it and I'll figure it out uh -huh. because this was just a test. I didn't have to show any of this footage. But as I, as I documented it, you know, I got some really neat stuff. And so then with the, uh, the quarantine and people being at home, I figured it might be fun to really ep edit episodes. And so I've been learning how to do that. And what I've recognized, it, it, it hurts my heart. <laughs> but so many people are this they just have never come across 360 video before totally understandable but they've been looking at the footage in a web browser uh maybe on their usually on their mobile phone and the web browsers don't always understand that it's 360 footage so they've been looking at this equal rectangular projection okay. and they've been like well, what's good what's that all about and so uh, that's one of the things that i've been faced with is how to tell people please, please, please watch it in the YouTube app on your phone or on a computer and stuff like and, that. And the and YouTube then I app turn, turns into that viewer that when you hold it sideways, you can just like pan around. You can move it side to side and you will pan around in that, in that, uh, in that sphere that you're in. So, so the, the, there's, there's kind of three, three ways to view this properly. You can view it in a browser that totally understands that it is 360 and gives you a frame that you can pan around in. Um, but unless you pan around, it gives you a statically framed image. And if you do so this in your I've web been, browser, then that's what you get. You get this image with not much indication that you could pan around in it. Yeah, so what you get is you get this. And as we go, you know, through the, you just get this. Yeah. So you, you might and be missing stuff behind you. So uh, you'd be also amazed how many people have reached out to me and said, I'm so glad you you're putting episodes out. 
I've watched four episodes and I've just realized now I can look around. <laughs> I can actually I can actually pan it, you know, wherever I want to go. Yeah. And so that's what um that's what I've been editing for. That I recognize is going to be my main audience. They're not going to know. Um and so I've been editing it as much as I can so that if you just point forward and just watch it, you'll still get the story. Um, and so the, the most important material I'm putting up front and center in the, uh, the field of view so that you still, you still can watch something as if it was just a traditional um, flat piece of video. And so I, would, then I would think about 9 out of 10 people will probably watch it in a rectangular window somehow. Yeah. So mm -hmm. that's probably a good approach to edit it so as if people were not panning around in it. But I was I was for the first episode back in May when I was editing it, I was trying to steer people this way and that way and by key framing camera rotations because you have the whole frame. I can point the camera up, I can point it left and right, whatever I want. So you you can but move you... that virtual camera around and I was watching it inside the VR headset and I felt like my head was being jerked around all the time and I didn't want that. I yeah. wanted to to have the time to look around and explore, but the the way that you had the way that you kind of had to edit this for a rectangular watching audience May, I mean, this is a, this is a real dilemma right now because we are at the at the fork here somehow. The the VR is is getting more prevalent. We're probably two years ago until people can buy glasses, AR glasses, which will project that stuff. Um, so this is this is a big dilemma. It is, and and I was doing I was coming at it from a a, a traditional mindset where. Okay, we're going across the suspension bridge. Like it's really high off the ground. You want to look down, and I so I, I want people to look down. And if you're just looking at it, um, on a on a, a flat uh, web browser, you're not gonna know that you can look down. So I was like, okay, I'll just rotate the camera so that you're looking down. And you told me that when I did, in one of my test uh, edits. You told me that when you were watching it with the headset on the head-mounted display, the Oculus. You just you just about fell over. <laughs> well, I, I was, was really I was looking that was down. Good advice. I was tilting my head forward to look down, and at that moment, the whole thing started moving forward. So, I was doing a somersault in. You were doing a somersault in VR, and that was yeah. But it, this is a learning process, and I'm so grateful that we have an opportunity to 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 start working with a completely different way of looking i mean if you look at the history of uh, film the cameras used to be big static boxes a hundred years ago and then they started putting them on rails and move them and then they started having the, the ability to handhold them at one point and then and so on and so on so there is there is always something new and 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 then you need as filmmakers you need to have a uh, you have to learn to, to use the new visual language and you or you have to develop a new visual language for the whole thing and this is i think what we're doing right now and it's been a real learning experience it's been a lot of fun but it it has been um it takes longer to edit these than than <laughs> with standard standard video because and and, and and i am by no means expert at this i am completely uh, grasping at straws with a lot of this stuff, but it's been a fun experiment. It's been a fun yeah. problem to solve for myself. And at the end of the day, if I find I watch it because I I do a quality check of everything before I post it to YouTube, if I find that I enjoyed it, I'm good. That's, I, like I'm, I'm not trying to break any barriers here. I'm just trying to um, put stuff out that could be enjoyable. And, and I but, think so what the pro. Oh, go ahead. Go ahead. I th I think you're really at a, at an advantage though, because you are playing with this before it's becoming mainstream, which it will at one point. So, <laughs> so you are you are you're well prepared to deal with uh, with whatever is coming because you have had this experience. So when when this wave breaks over us, and that will happen sooner or later, then uh, you'll be like, it'll be totally fluid for you. I hope so, but. I know I know how it usually works with me, and by the time it's adopted, I'll be on to the next cutting edge, bleeding edge thing, and and floundering at that uh, by that time. But what my process has been is <clears throat> my normal editing process is that you know you go through and you piece together, you piece together the story, um, and then uh, 
in, in these episodes I'm adding, I'm, I'm not doing my standard rest of Everest style where I do commentary over the whole thing. Yeah. Instead, I, I, I just, I'm, I'm doing them fully produced with music and everything like that, which has been fun. Um, but <clears throat> I'll go through, I'll edit it, then I'll do the audio mix, and then I'll add color correction, <clears throat> and that's usually where you stop. But now I have to adjust the point of view. And so now I have to go through the whole thing and decide what do I want to frame up in the center for the static viewer uh, that doesn't know you can move around. And what do I, um, if, I've, if I've recorded, let's say, a, a, a one minute sequence of just nonstop video, if, if I have me talking and someone in front of me talking, you can't see us both at the same time. So I have to keyframe back and forth, cutting from me to them, and which um, you would do I'm in, a, in to, a regular rectangular format, yes. Right, but what I'm also trying to do is for people who are actually watching it with the head-mounted display, with a, with a, a VR headset, um, I'm trying to make it so that they don't have to whip their head around to see stuff. So uh, as long as you are pretty much sitting in a comfortable chair looking forward, you'll get most of it. If you then want to say, oh, I want to know what's over there, you can look over there. If you want to know what's over there, you can look over there. So, but otherwise, you can you can get the whole image, the whole story, just by sort of just relaxing. It, it feels like forward. you'd almost have to provide two separate versions, a rectangular and a spherical one. Is that something that the tool chain supports, that you can have, like, from the same source material have two separate kind of uh, versions one with the keyframes and one without them does that make sense even yeah i mean of course you can do anything it just comes down to time so um these are taking me oh uh, each episode's taking me probably about 10 hours mm. 10 to 15 hours uh, to edit which is a long time that is crazy but it's also it's also because i'm i'm running on antiquated uh, equipment. What, what, um, what do you mean antiquated equipment? So I'm running all of this on a 2010 Mac Pro that I've continually okay. upgraded, but I've I've pushed it through upgrades of processors and video cards and RAM to its absolute limit. Um, but it's still an outdated architecture, so things don't play as smoothly as I'd like them to. So there's just delays. If I hit play on the on on the on Premiere. It can take a few seconds to get going, and so it just mm. takes a long time. I, 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 as I've been experimenting with this, I've realized what I want to upgrade to. I, I really do want a forty thousand dollar Mac Pro um, and stuff like that, but I just can't justify it. Aren't at this those point. episodes so, paying that for that? Don't they pay that for oh, themselves? Yes, yes. The rest of Everest has always been a huge money maker, Chris. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so so show, show us a few things. So what we're looking at here is an episode of uh, the rest of Everest. Um, so as we're recording this, this is an unreleased episode. This is going to be the next one. Um, I am editing them in 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 order, and I I edit it and release it as soon as it's done. Um, but this one is an episode where we have gone up to the village of Dingboche. Which I, I had remember not been that to well for 11 years ago, you. yes. Yeah. yeah. Um, and uh, so this is where we start, we get, we're finally above the tree line. And so um, what, what, I've been, what I've done here, and what you'll see on the screen, is you'll see the full frame image, images like this, okay? This is 360 footage. As you said earlier, I've been combining it with a standard flat image images um, with a, a more traditional video camera. And so what happens is you get you get these little wonky um, uh, small kind of video screens floating in the air. So this is a standard, uh, um, this is actually a 4K image here. And, and inside a headset, it just, it just is a, 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 a rectangle yeah. hovering Let in the air. Let me go to the... Yeah. Let me go to the VR mode, and you'll see yeah. that's what it looks like yeah. if you're if you're seeing it um, for real. So, um, so what what you're seeing when you when you are looking at this 
uh, it's all distorted because again that's that's it being warped into the equirectangular projection. Um, so all that black is is mo everything to the left and right is primarily behind you, mm. and so it actually is like looking at a uh, IMAX screen when you're looking through it in the uh, VR headset. Mm. It's, so a it's, huge, actually, it's, it's a huge, it's a huge big quite screen large, in the yeah. in, in the space. Yeah, really, it's like it's like an IMAX. It's yeah. enormous, and um, so that works pretty well. But um, uh, so I've been kind of, I've been mixing the this footage with the 360 because. I also was limited to battery power, so sometimes I'd just run out of battery power and I'd have to switch, you know, go back to whatever camera I had just to continue filming and telling the story. And so it is a mix and it's been a been a challenge. But it works quite seamlessly. I mean, you have these, these some of those have transitions, so you have this like rectangular big IMAX screen in front of you in, the, in VR and then uh, you switch to something else and it's still crop to that size and then you open it up and then you realize oh i'm actually in a much bigger space here so uh the, the way you combine this works really well yeah so you'll get you'll get this and then it will um it will transition you'll see a a, a cut to the 360 there you go. Now we're in 360, yeah. some B-roll from the 360 camera. And it's immediately obvious well, can... inside this thing that you were looking at kind of a cinema screen and then all of a sudden you're in there. So I like this. It's not jarring. It's very it's very amazing to see that kind of uh, back and forth here. Yeah, and um, so you can, but you can see that equator rectangular projection is funky. Yes, it is. It, it looks really strange. And so that's been... Um, that's been part of the process when I say that final pass that I go through where I have done all of the, the edit, I've done the audio mix, I've done the color correction that I want, then I have to decide what do I want right in front. And so you were, you were asking, can you re uh, or create a, uh, another version just, just for your right. flat uh, viewers? And, it just comes down to time. It just be going through and, and redoing it, and um, there's plugins and stuff that you can use to re reframe. Right. So when you get the 360 image, you can pull an HD frame or a 4K frame out of that any way you want, and so you can just extract a 4K frame out of it, um, and it would just be going through and doing that. So what I do is I'll go through and let me go to uh, some stuff higher up here on that day's trek. So let's say right here, okay? Right now, you'll see that I'm, I'm using my guides, uh, my safe area guides in, in, um, in Premiere, and I've got my center frame mark right here. Can you see that? Yes. Okay, so what I do is I use that for reference, and there might be better ways to do this. I have been pretty bad about researching it. I've just been kind of trying to figure it out. On I my think own. everyone is so at I, that point right now trying to figure this out. So I've been I've been using that as my center uh, center point. And so if you are facing front and center with a headset on or with your phone or with uh, a web browser, that's going to be the center of the frame. So in this particular case. Um, I'm looking at this hillside right here. What I could do is if I wanted to focus on myself, now if, if you're on either side of the frame, this is the back. This is going to be the back of the viewer's head. So they're not going to see any of this material back here. But I can go through and I can I can um, just move everything. I can pan and then I put myself under those hash marks. And all the pans and, and, uh, and motion that you do here with your mouse, you could keyframe that so that the viewer will be guided or their vision will be guided. You could do that. I did that for the first episode and it just makes me want to throw up. So <laughs> I have stopped doing that because when you're when you're watching it on a phone or watching on your computer it's absolutely no problem we're used to seeing that kind of movement but when you are fully immersed in the vr headset yeah any movement that happens that you're not expecting it's 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 instant motion sickness yeah so 
Um, unless you have what's you know called how, VR legs, and le- unless you are really like, uh, you've done this for months and months, and your brain has adapted. But to most people, that's just not the case. Yeah, I've I've found that I can I can watch this stuff really well. But if I'm sitting in a chair, but if I'm in a rocking chair, I have a rocking chair on my deck that I sometimes <laughs> watch it on. Just if I'm rocking in the chair. Oh, and it's and it's to, because and it's because because our sensory inputs don't agree, right? You see, you have the feeling that you're there and you're being moved around, but nothing is actually moving. So it's car yeah. sickness. It's just it's exactly the same. Yeah. You're sitting still in a car, yet your body feels like it's moving. So right. what I what I what I've what I've recognized is that I do not want to keyframe anything anymore. Mm-hmm. Instead, I'd rather what I'm using here is you can see that um, I've got keyframes. So this this um, has a one point of view here, then a point of view here, and then one I just added. But these are called hold keyframes. So there's no animation between them. Once it gets to that, it cuts to that position, and then it holds mm. until it gets to the next keyframe, and then it cuts. So it's just like a traditional cut in a film. And you're using Premiere. Um, is that? all native or do you use any specific plugins to get your edits in there how's that work i'm using it's just premiere um premiere has been pretty good about the the 360 editing for the past few years okay and and um so there's a there's a couple different things that um i do i use it in both the mac and the pc so i'm, I'm running boot camp on this this machine and the only reason that I use Boot Camp is because it allows me to preview the edit in VR in the headset by using Oculus. Oculus is a standalone headset, but you can connect it with a USB 3 cable um, to a PC, and um, it utilizes Steam. Uh, any gamers out there know the Steam platform? Um, Steam has a VR component, and it will actually integrate with Premiere and allow you to preview it. I thought there'd be all kinds of cool ways you could edit wearing the headset, and that's just not where we're at right now. So really, it's just for playing back the footage. So you could um, you could yeah. hit playback, and it would show directly in the headset. Yeah, you can you can you can you can put the headset on, and then you can look around, and you can you can make sure that everything looks okay. Uh-huh. And so. Um, <clears throat> But uh, what I've found is that I've, I'm, I think this is episode, this is part nine. So I've done, this is my ninth episode. Mm -hmm. They're all about half an hour long, somewhere around there. So um, I've been doing this enough to know pretty well now when when I can read the equirectangular projection and I can get a pretty good idea of what it's going to look like for the viewer mm-hmm. just by looking at the projection. And so I go through and I do everything. I only jump into Premiere Pro on the PC to do a final, just make, if there's something where maybe we're having a conversation out in the field and am I jumping back and forth too much? Is it going to make the viewer sick? Um, all these, you know, these cuts of point of view back and forth. I'll, I'll preview that, but for the most part, um, I've gotten it down to, uh, I can, my, my, my gut is pretty good at this point as to what to see, mm. uh, what, what, what I want to be in front of the cam, in front of the camera. Um, <clears throat> so, so it works pretty well. So can, can we have a look? Can we have a, a look inside the headset? Is that possible? Yeah, we can. So, um, here, let me, uh, do this all right so um once i once i have once i figure that everything's looking pretty good then i export it as a uh an mpeg4 uh, an mp4 file so and there's I no upload sp- it to there's the... no special 360 format it's just a plain old mp4 it's an mp4 but it has flags mm, okay. um in the in the metadata uh to say that it's uh what kind of projection it is mm-hmm. um, that it's monos- that it's monoscopic and um, so the, the the headset reads it really really easily and um, so anyway, I put it on the internal uh, storage here and then uh, I go sit in a comfortable chair and I watch it and usually I smile all the way through because it's like being transported back there <laughs> yes. I, I've been I've, one more thing before we see I've been I've been um, ending these episodes with my friend Dawa. Since he lives in Fort Collins, I can just drive down and we record.
record just a little commentary at the end. And um, at first, uh, he has a restaurant in town still. And so before they open, I'd go and uh, for the day, I'd go down, we'd film the stuff. But I'd, I'd let him watch it. And one time I was having him watch, it must have been like part two or three. And he was watching it and um, a uh, someone came in, some delivery person came in with some, you know, to-go containers or something uh, to drop off mm -hmm. for him. And he took it off and you could see that he was like it was jarring that he was back in Fort Collins because for a moment there he was completely transported to Nepal and that was really yeah. gratifying. I I love that. So let me um let me uh, show you what this looks like. So there you are inside the what is that the home area of the Oculus Quest? So it's uh, my space station, I think. <laughs> you should, yeah, you can choose multiple things. So this is what it looks like inside, and you can look around and. Uh, now uh, this is kind of a the home screen app launcher kind of thing so um yeah so so you've got your controllers so i can see these controllers virtually um you have those in your hand. Are in hardware have them in my hands yes yeah and so what i've been using is just the oculus gallery um for the previews here that's kind of a built-in so built video player yeah so i go to my internal storage and then I can, so this, this is the uh, video here. Turn my volume down. So there is your intro screen. And now you can look around inside of it. So this is a rectangular screen um, that you're looking at when you move around. So this is where, it, yeah, this is how you can see that it's, uh, it's like an IMAX screen. That's just amazing. Um, to me, it, to me, it looks like it's about oh twenty meters tall. I <laughs> yes. mean, it's quite quite large. It um, is, and the here, resolution me, uh, the resolution is relatively good, given that uh, it's being projected to such a virtual size. Yeah. Unfortunately, um, can you move the mouse? It's over the screen right now. Ah, there oops. we go. Okay, so this is um again this is what the full footage or excuse me the flat footage looks like <laughs> and uh had to get the dog shot um but let's go forward just a little bit so you're you're just you're just as a regular video player just it plays inside yeah. of the VR and it plays but that with but with the 360 video here, so I can look anywhere I want. Yeah. This is just yeah. This is just this is just very a very amazing experience being inside one of these. And let me go. Let me let me go a little bit forward in time here. So many memories regarding that. So. So um, what uh, what you're able to do is, so what you're seeing is, if I'm just facing forward, um, I'm, I'm able to get, kind of think of it almost like as a square uh, rectangular image because I, I get just a little bit of peripheral. Um, with these headsets on, you only have a certain uh, number of degrees of view. Um, and then you start, it's like looking through binoculars. And then you can see the heads, the sides of the, of the headset, um, but it's kind of like a wide oval for me, um, and so I, I I can't see what's to either side. It's just black, but if I want to, I can I can turn my head and <laughs> yeah. I can see what's what's anyway. I can you know look at the trail below us and that kind of thing. And this is why I didn't want to keyframe any of those movements. I'd rather the person just rotate around and and look at everything themselves. Look at mm -hmm. all those yaks down there, <laughs> and then um. There's these white yaks up here, which were pretty phenomenal. But um, I wanted them to do, to look where they wanted to. And so it, it's actually quite comfortable. Even though I'm moving the camera around, um, I did not have the time on this trip because I wasn't with a group of photographers. And there's nothing slower on a trek than 15 photographers. I um, know. <laughs> <laughs> and so you, you, get, you get plenty of opportunity to 
set up camera shots and everything. With this, it was just pretty much us walking the whole time. So I just held that selfie stick, which, as you can see, isn't there. You know, you, it's it's not there. Um, I'll look, but see, I can look back and see myself. There I am. I'm always there. Um, it's, it's, but, it's, it's a it's a it's a it's nice that it covers uh, covers everything, but it's also. Uh, can be problematic if you don't want to want to be in a shot. You have to hide behind something. You have to put the camera well, on the tripod. Yeah, you have to hide. You literally have to hide. And you have to go behind uh, a rock or something. But you know, I I just I I got comfortable with that, and I just said, you know what? Let's just not worry about that. I'm going to be in every shot, and rarely am I going to use a tripod. Um, if if it's a static shot like this, I'm just simply holding it in my hand. Um, there's a lot more you could do, but it just takes so much more time to set that up. Uh, we, we kept moving. There were only four of us um, and, and, a, and a few guides and porters. And so uh, usually we have a small army of people. Um, and, uh, oh, by the way, Chris, this is uh, that hillside in Dingmoche where the what? rocks were spelled Megan's out. Megan's birthday, yes. Megan's birthday. <laughs> that's, somewhere, and, um, that's somewhere in the archives. I think it's, it's online, yeah. right? That episode. Oh yes, of yeah. course. But but in any case, so it's just it's really interesting that you can you can just really look anywhere you want when you once you have the headset on, and it's very very comfortable. You do get some little sea legs as as you were mentioning, where VR um, legs, yeah. Some people are going to be susceptible to motion sickness no matter what if it's a, a moving image, but you know what? It's actually pretty comfortable for the most part. And after watching one or two episodes. Um, what I try to do is if I am moving a lot, um, oftentimes I'm in the shot and I'm at a fixed distance. So if you focus on what's being said by me, it's, it gives you a point of reference and it, it, it helps alleviate some of that motion discomfort. But, um, no, it's just, it works really well and... Yeah, it took it's it just, took me it took me a few hours inside VR in the beginning to get over that initial like okay this is weird and then your brain or my brain at least kind of rewired itself in that respect and now I can you can throw anything at me. Yeah, yeah, you get pretty pretty good at it, but it's um it's it's just it's so intuitive and that's mm -hmm. that's the thing that I love about this footage and why I'm I'm so eager to go out there. Uh, in the near future when we can travel again and film some more because, you know, I've got different ideas of maybe how I would do yeah. it. And, and, um, but just to be able to really, I can just, I can look anywhere I want. So and, you've, you've done this in video. We have also shot some, some still photos, right? Yeah. So let's go some that. So over the years, um, I've, uh, I've shot some stills. One of my first, stills that I shot was one of my favorites with you and this is with the Theta so all that footage that you were just watching was with the Insta one Insta 360 Evo this is with the Theta and <laughs> these are these are just these are just a couple of really handsome guys that I yes. saw hanging around so yes. I'm glad I'm thought... wearing a black shirt you don't see the belly <laughs> <laughs> very slimming <laughs> But so this is this is the the cool thing about the 360 is that you can you know you get these different experiences. So this just looks like just a a very plain shot. But and we're not striking a pose at all. Let me just rotate around. Yeah. Is this not one of the more interesting buildings you've ever seen? The Harpa so. in Reykjavik, the Opera House, and it's one of the ma most amazing buildings I've been inside. Yes. And this is the kind of building that really. Takes me right back, to yeah. <laughs> a 360 because it just doesn't look like anything else. And, yeah. and if you take a regular shot of it, I mean, this is a terrible quality image um, because it was such an early camera. Um, but it really allows you to get the perspective of just how yeah. interesting this building is. And you just put the camera on that railing and press the button, and it. Yeah, it, let it, me it, see if I can see. No, it, oh, it, it, it looks edits like itself it, out, yeah. yeah. Yeah, I can see a little bit. <laughs> where the camera might have been but yeah but it works really well so yeah. this was a this was a great use of uh of 360 i'm so happy you took that picture um this is uh shows a few more here so this is this is another one that i thought was really neat so this is in um in iceland shoot, where it's in, it's in no it's in greenland oh that was so in greenland see. absolutely this is 
Let's look. Okay. So this is the first village, and there's this little church there, and it was such a darling little little church, and you can you know you can get you can get all of these shots of it, but the 360 really helps you give an idea of just how small it is, yeah. how simple, and um, it, it's neat because it allows you that you know there's a polar bear fur on the, in front of me here, a polar bear rug, and then yeah, you can see all this uh, around around the the side here. That's all seal skin and everything. But it just was really an intimate setting, and it, it gave you more of a feeling of being there. Um, just an, another another option. Um, for mm. for documenting this material, and um, let's go up to the telescopes on top of Mauna Kea in Hawaii. There's my son Sam. Yeah, I haven't been with you there, but um, but you know, there's there was a lot going on up there, and it was fun to be able to see the orientation of all of the different yeah. telescopes. Yeah. There's Christopher. <laughs> <laughs> And uh, so these are, oh, let me go back around here. All right, so. <laughs> You're getting tangled up in the cable. <laughs> I am. Um, here's Singapore, and these are Gardens by the Bay. Anyone who's been there knows that these are just outrageous, this whole area. Terrible quality again, but still gives you an impression of what, uh, what it was like you've done a, you've done a good job keeping all that i've taken a lot of uh, uh 360 shots with a theta one and uh, i i have a few left but i didn't keep all of them because because of the horrible quality but then on the other hand this is a this is almost like a historic document so this would have been 2018 and then um yeah and the theta s is, is is newer than the theta one which was like 10, 1080p resolution for the entire sphere, which is nothing. Yeah, yeah. It, and 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 the um, uh, the Evo and most of them these days are about five point seven k, which is yeah. so. Then we can go into this is this is another good uh, use of the three sixty video. So this is in Dubai. Um, this was I went to a my ski, second trip to Dubai a ski slope just before Dubai. going to Everest. Yep, I had a business trip out there, and I always, when I got there, I try to go skiing. But um, <laughs> you know, as, as you as, do in Dubai, as you do, as you do. Um, but uh, so this is my my good friend Enrique and my coworker. Um, so, but you know, how do you how do you get in a real impression of of these places? It's just really easy to do with the, the three sixty video. Let yeah. me get going on. Some skiing, and you can see I'm holding I'm holding it in I'm holding the camera in, in my uh, hand there, right? And it just you know it looks like someone's filming me, um, and it's just <laughs> you can see the skis, yeah, and it's just it's just really interesting. So uh, you know this is all just playing around with it, getting comfortable with with how to use it and everything. And do, and, do, you, um, do you think if anyone wants to get into this, that, that this might be the right time to start diving into it? Just as a, I don't know, if, if you don't have an immediate use for it, but as a preparation of what's what's to come, what's to be upon us not too long from now? Well, um, you know, it, it, um, it still seems pretty early yeah. days for me. Um, there's lots, the apps on the phone help you edit quite a bit and... Um, but you know, I just enjoy it. You can get images that uh, you can't <laughs> get any other way. And so this one is from Greenland. This is one of the expeditions we did. Um, there's an amazing glacier back there, and then there's a guy jumping over the 360 <laughs> camera. We're looking <laughs> right up it. Okay. Um, so yeah, we had we had a lot of fun playing, just just playing with it. That's... But yeah, it just it just allows you um, it allows you to just really do some things um, that you can't get. And I'm just I'm so excited about the technology. And wearing wearing the the Oculus is definitely the best way to experience this. But not everyone has one. So here we can we can stop the uh, yeah. Let's 
let's bring the two of us back to there we go so so you know there are um there are other other ways that you can enjoy it and um still still have a really satisfying experience without either investing in a now minimum three hundred dollar investment this one i think was four hundred when i bought it mm -hmm. a year and a half ago um but uh the um one of the things that i i've i did all these experiments with the less expensive viewer options and i bought like a thirty dollar headset that was made of plastic had you know some decent lenses in it and um, it works pretty well and and, but and then that and that needs a phone to be inside of it right? yeah so you use you use the phone and um and then there's what modes, modes what to found, project it as a side by side picture so you have one for the left eye one for the right eye and that will then so it will on. split I'll sh and i'll show you that in a second um how it how it does that but what i ended up finding is that the google cardboard viewers are amazing they give you like 90% of the experience of the headset of the $300 $400 headset for $15 US and and you can go even cheaper this is this is a, a one that was completely built and this is a, a less expensive this so is like fold, a $6 fold one fold it yourself that it's called Google cardboard for a reason this is cardboard but this one is uh, it's kind of taped together and hot glued together it just for six dollars, I thought I'll give it a shot, but it, it's not worth it. It's the, the completely DIY ones are not worth it. So I got this one. This one's um, by a company called I am or I'm Cardboard. I am Cardboard, and I just got it off Amazon. And it it um it's much more slick than the others. So hold it up. This one's this, this it, one's yeah. brand this one's brand new. So let me take the covers off the lenses here. Oh, it comes with okay, protection, so, okay. So what it does is it is still all cardboard. Some Velcro. Some Velcro, so it just, you unfold it. You flip this up and around. Ah, so it turns into this, into this shape thing that goes against your head, okay. Okay, so now you've got, you've got your lenses right in here <laughs> and so this is this is where this is where you put your face and then this is where you put your phone so you just use uh any smartphone and you use the youtube use the youtube app and what happens is let me use the youtube app and i'll find the rest so, of everest so when when you have one of your videos up of one of the, the the 360 videos then uh will it give you like an indication that you can Switch it to a different mode. Well, anything that is 360 um, will. Here, let me go to the first one. This is Root. Customize let me go your through the, uh, the ad here. Whenever you need it, download the app today. Oh. Okay. Good morning. Uh, my name is Lieutenant Dangle of the see. Reno <laughs> Sheriff's Department. <laughs> a statement. Reno 911. Okay. So. So this is okay. So if I go turn it down a little bit, full screen. So yeah. so what you can see here. Let me bring you up. There you go. Okay. So what you get here is if you are in portrait mode, you can pan around. No, it's not panning. It's not panning. Okay. There we go. Let's see. Yeah. So it overexposes a bit. Overexposed. Okay. Um, in any case, um, let me... Uh, Just bring down the brightness a bit. Yeah, that's what I'm doing. There we go. All right. So I can... Yeah. You can just swipe around and uh, move around it but this way. It also uses the accelerometers in the phone. So if you do this, you can see it will look around for it's like, you. It's like a window into, into that world, right? Let's go into portrait mode and you can see. Yep. Okay. So, it, so, so what it does is, so it uses those accelerometers and then when you put it in the, um, you put it into cardboard mode. So let's see if I go, 
let's see. So down in the in the corner here, there's a little cardboard icon. If I push, press that button, it turns you'll into see that two side-by-side -side views. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So so what it allows you to do is so it splits the screen in half, one for each eye, which are then projected through the lenses in the cardboard viewer. It's like, so, you know, when photography was re really young, they experimented with that and they had viewers where you could put like a, shoot, a printed you know, out photo got one, in there. I've got one in another room in my house yeah. that's in storage. And I this is the exact it, it's exactly, same thing, just with yeah. video and made from cardboard and some quite decent okay. lenses usually. So the, 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 the phone is actually just right here sandwiched <laughs> in. It's got Velcro up top. And when I look through here, okay, I'm only seeing one image, um, but I can pan around. And again, it's using those accelerometers in in the yeah. in the phone, so that it's a it's a pretty seamless experience. Um, it does shake because it, it, every little little uh, you know yeah. vibration from my hand gets transferred to it. But I can look around. I can look down. I can get almost that same experience, but I just I have to hold it up to my head. And it works really well. So for fifteen dollars, um, the other thing that's just neat about these—I know people in your audience will geek out on it—but it can you can actually select things using the cardboard viewer here because it has a has a little metal button right here. There's a magnet in there, okay. And what happens is it's just a little lever. There's noth nothing electronic here. When you press that button. The magnet gets closer to the phone, changes the um, magnetic field around the phone. The phone can access the compass in the in the you know the, the, the and the YouTube the app sensor. knows that and it it, it senses that as a button push. So I can actually <laughs> I, can I didn't go know that I, I did not know yeah. that it's just it's it's just like the dumbest thing and it works really well. So so so, so you they are messing with a compass in the phone to register a button that is ingenious it's just the magnetic field <laughs> and, and that's why genius. these these ones these these older ones yeah. they have literally just there's a couple of magnets here yeah and you do this you 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 push it down oh my God. and okay that it just it, it alters the magnetic field momentarily and wild. it senses it as a button push that so anyway, is these wild. work these work really well, and if anyone is really interested in trying this stuff out for the first time, and I'm telling you, if you've ever seen those old turn of the turn of the last century um, 3D viewers, yeah. it's exactly the same. Yeah. You had the images on both sides with a line down the center. That's what I'm seeing. That's what I'm seeing through here. I don't know if that's coming through yeah. at all. Yeah, yeah it but, is. But it's it's just exactly the same, and it works. It's really cool. <sighs> so uh, that uh, this is all st still sort of early days. I know that um, things are becoming more sophisticated, and there's going to be a lot more content coming out in the next few years. I think it hinges know, it hinges on the the ability to view these things easily, not uh, yeah. but but not having like a spe specific device that you need to wear and that kind of stuff. And um, or or it becomes normal to wear something like AR glasses and stuff that are all in the making and all the big companies are working hard on getting those out um, within the next two to three years, I guess we have. What, one more questions. thing about the editing process that I forgot to mention that I think is important is um, when, I, when I was thinking about how I'm going to take this footage and I'm going to give it out to the audience, I thought I'll just put together like a 15, 20 minute best of you know, compilation, a montage. And what, what I realized is that I had too big of an experience to comfortably put to squash down to 15 it's minutes. It's impossible. Well, I mean, maybe maybe more um, uh, accomplished editors than me could do it. But I just felt that with the 360, you need to let the, the shots breathe mm -hmm. because you want to give people the opportunity to look around and so the editing pace is much different with the 360 than with the flat 2D footage, and and so that was that's been another learning curve. You know, you, you don't want to do any, any quick quick uh, takes, quick cuts, because then you know as soon as someone's gone, oh, what's up there? It cuts to something else, mm -hmm. and so you kind of have to let these breathe. And so what I find is there's a lot of uh, footage as especially as we get higher and there's a lot more view 
when you're above the trees and not in the forest where I just kind of let it go for 30, 40 seconds of just walking. Which would and not I'm, I'm work talking. in a purely rectangular context, but in VR it, that really works it, well, it, yes. Yeah, it would be too boring, but you know, you're still hearing me talk, I'm, I'm narrating something, um, I like the sound of my own voice, and then, and then uh, <laughs> but it allows, allows you to, you can tune out what I'm saying and you can just look around yourself. You don't have to be, you, you can kind of choose your own adventure in a way. Which yeah. is really neat, and that's that's one of the really cool things about this this new technology, and the cameras are getting better all the time. True. Uh, I'm I'm really really hoping that uh, we'll be able to increase the resolution next time I go out there. Yeah, um, I think I think 8K 360 cameras are right around the corner right now. <laughs> I'm not quite sure I'm going to edit that, but uh, you need yeah. that's, that'll that'll be the 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 push that pushes you over the edge to get a bigger computer. Well, I mean, okay, forty thousand dollar computer. Normally, I come back from one of these trips. Uh, let's say if I if I do a month, like in 2010, we were gone a month. Uh, in 2014, I think I was gone six weeks uh, because I did a Bhutan trip and then then the Everest trip. And I think I came back. I was shooting in 1080p for all of that. And I think I came back with maybe three or four hundred gigabytes of material, which was a lot, you know. Uh -huh. um, this this was a nothing two and a half week tr trip, <laughs> and I came back, and it's all highly compressed. Uh, I came back with a terabyte of material. Yay! And, and um, so then all of that, you know, M MPEG four, um, H.264, H.265 are not the best formats to edit in, so. I've created proxies, and I'm also kind of converting it to ProRes, which makes it a little bit less work on my computer to decode. And it just takes up so much space. That's what so you get from being at the bleeding edge. That's Well, yeah. again, this is, this is not 4K footage, most of it. It's nearly 6K. Yeah. Um, so it's, 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 a lot of, it's a lot of bits, and um, it's just all these different workflows about how to manage the data and everything. It's all been a really good exper experiment, and... But at the, end of, at the end of the day, it's just one more way to tell the story out there and one more way to really get those people who are nutty about Everest, like me, that who, who don't feel they can ever go out there, or maybe they can't ever go out there. Just one more way to get them a little bit closer because there's no way to replicate the experience of being there yourself. But I've been trying for nearly 20 years to get people as close as possible um, very fortunate to have taken many people out there in person. Um, but this 360 footage, I'm really excited about it because I think it gets you that much closer. Is that close I do want to film. I do want, I do, I am interested in trying the, the stereoscopic 360. But right now, um, the distribution formats are wonky. Yeah. Because in order to get that it actually takes the, f the, the rectangular frame and it s cuts it in half and squeezes an entire equal rectangular projection for each eye. It squeezes it into half the frame. And then upon playing it in the headset, it stretches it back out per eye. It's, it's anamorphic. Not, oh, anamorphic. Yeah. Uh, but what it does is it, they become fuzzy. Unless you're going at a mu like an 8K, you know, 8K resolution. If you're going to a standard, you know, like even the 5.7K. But, but isn't it crazy it's, it's, what's possible at home today with today's computers uh, and today's technology that is not, that's not a $100,000 cameras. That's a camera that is just, I don't know, a thousand or how much is the uh, Evo? Um, I think it's probably about four hundred and there we go fifteen dollars something like that. <laughs> it's but, just crazy. But it's but it's this big, you know. Yeah. And um, so they have they have new ones out that uh, are more. They look more like GoPros. They're actually they have a convertible one yeah. that can go between an action camera and a three sixty. What I really want though is I absolutely want more dynamic range. What mm -hmm. you'll find is that when I'm in the in the woods uh, down to lower altitudes, the sky if, if it's exposed for me in the woods, the sky is completely uh, blown out. I think there's, the, the sensors no aren't big enough just yet. So No, I think, I think they're uh, one and two-thirds, so they're 
they're tiny. Yeah, they're tiny. But um, as a size have, of the, have some of one, the fingernail one on your pinky. Coming out. Yeah, very small. <sighs> so anyway, yeah, that, that's that's all coming. That's all coming. So it's all all baby steps. All right. But I had to start. Had to start somewhere. It's so awesome. I'm and inside. I'm happy that that I can be a part of this in one way or the other. So thank you so much for coming. Thank you so much for sharing all this with us. Um, I'm pretty sure that people are now getting excited to watch those episodes. So um, let me just point to your lower third here. youtubecom slash Everest is the place to go. Anywhere else where you want people to to visit you, or is that the, the main the main entry point right now? That's the that's the main point. Yeah, I'll, I'll once I once I've got some time back uh, from the edit because the edit's taken up all my spare time. Then I'll I'll get more into promoting it. Mostly, I just want to get it out there and let that core group of people I've been filming it for watch it. Well, when they everyone time. should watch it because it's amazing. Even if you only watch it in two D on your rectangular phone, I think it's uh, it's it's wonderful stories. It's very human. It's very very real so thank you for sharing with us and that was yet another episode of tips from the top floor yay another episode in the can thanks all for watching thanks all for being here and uh for for listening if you only listened you might have missed something so that might be the point to go back and watch some of this because i think it's really interesting and you can also see the shot f the, the shot of the two handsome men in the harper <laughs> in reykjavik okay until Stunning next men. time. <laughs> exactly. Stunning. Until next time, um, that was it. Take care and um, happy shooting. Bye-bye.